Hi everyone, it's Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending October the 1st, 2021. Well, we finally got rid of Q3. We're starting Q4 in 2021. Pretty uh, pretty bloody month that September was for the major indexes all around. There are a few bright spots. Uh, currently this week, I could tell you that um, uh, from, my, from my vantage point, I can see the case for uh, the the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 uh, and the mid caps to go ahead and potentially make a bounce for next week. They are trending down though and if they don't uh, go ahead and, and bounce uh, either later today, we still have an hour and a half uh, worth of trading left today. Uh, if they close, if, they, if they're going to first day of, the, of Q4, if, they, if they're going to close uh, where they are right now or lower than I would say that they have the potential for moving down another 3%, uh, maybe 1.5% on the, on the mid caps, but the, the NASDAQ and the S&P uh, could potentially uh, move down another 3% uh, before they get to the next level, a, a next chance of, um, uh, of taking a bounce. If um, that, the play right now is in the mid caps. Uh, the the uh, Russell 3000 here. Let me uh, let me go take a look at that again. The Russell 3000 is trying to. Um, yeah, it's in the same same position there. It looks a little bit less of a downtrend than the uh, than that asked after the S and P. But your plays right now uh, for for a bullish plays right now are, are in the small caps. So we're getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of rotation going on. The uh, the treasuries though are holding still in the 150. Ten years still in the 150s range. So it's not that there is weakness uh, long term. It's just that uh, this is where we are right now. So it's a nice correction. Uh, get back the technicals. Get in order, and we'll see probably again next week. I mean, this is a very dicey week with all the political high school games from my uh, point of view in going on in Washington DC uh, these guys acting like high school kids uh, the way that they're uh, playing with the world economy it's not uh, not really fair but that's the way it, it goes uh, fairness uh, doesn't seem to it seems to have, to have been uh, thrown out as a doctrine I think probably back in the 80s <laughs> so a little, little play on uh, for my uh, for my broadcasting friends out there um, I wanted to talk a little bit this week about a couple of questions. Well, we had some we had great classes this week at Lanier Tech. We're going to finish those up, and we had both our, our class one sections this week. We're going to finish those up uh, next week. Let's take a week off, and then we'll do another round of uh, of classes out in Woodstock. You can check our our events page at uh, assetguidancegroup.com. If you look in the footer, you can check our events page. It'll, it'll take you over there to those if you want the, the information. But uh, Class 2 uh, is, is uh, the Linear Tech are, are already sold out and everything, but uh, really good classes there. The, the question came up uh, in terms of um, comparing uh, Whole Life versus uh, Indexed Universal Life. And for the most part, it depends upon your level of uh, willingness to continue to pay premiums forever. It's going to be very company specific and policy specific. But generally, whole life is going to be a much more conservative play. I mean, uh, the whole AG49 regulatory uh, uh, framework was changed at the end of, uh, of last year, of uh, December the 31st, basically, of 2020, all because the whole life carriers could no longer guarantee uh, their 4%. I mean, their entire structure of the regulations were based around a 4% uh, guarantee. And with interest rates where they are, although we seem to be in a rising interest rate environment right now, uh, they, they, they had to change the framework because they could no longer make those kind of uh, statements in good faith. Uh, the, the, the return on the whole lives are simply going to be in the lower percentiles now until things change somewhat uh, for the most part. Uh, the, those are very conservative carriers and, and, and you know they have to be by regulation uh, to, to provide the return for those whole life policies. And so uh, uh, right now long-term rates are two percent okay on treasuries and if if my calculation is looking at CBO and and the treasury direct.gov websites um, 
you can't go much more over 3.5%. 3.517% right now would put the, uh, if the yield was that, it would put the uh, uh, interest on the national debt at an even trillion dollars. That's probably something that they're not willing to run right now. That would be too big of a percentage of GDP. But not to get too wonky with this, on the contrary, uh, index universal life is pegged towards the performance of equities. And so uh, you've got no a guaranteed of no, uh, no, no downside risk on there. You're going to get something that could always allocate a portion to the fixed account, which is theoretically, uh, at least anyway, if we do a mathematical calculation on it, do enough to cover the costs of the policy, allow you to grow cash value fairly consistently over time at market-like rates of return. So um, if you're in that product versus being in the markets, uh, it, you're going to get what the markets give anyway, right? I mean, if you see it that way, so at least in this aspect, you have a, a, a better chance of growing a cash value uh, faster and you can stuff more cash uh, from my analysis uh, on the index side. So that's why we tend to favor those carriers and get more bang for your buck through the accelerated death benefits and living needs riders on that. Uh, also saw, just in closing here, also saw another another article uh, reaffirming that the Democratic bill that's come out of House Ways and Means is, is, tech, is really taking, uh, they've got their crosshairs on doing away with grantor trusts for those making a million dollars or more for estate sizes uh, north of, uh, of uh, probably three million. They're going to drop those exemptions. It's currently 11 and a half. Going to drop those back down to five and a half. So you're looking at repealing back to pre-tax cut and jobs act 2017. All right, don't want to get this to, uh, to get too long. Maybe we'll come back and address some of that next week. Uh, you guys have a happy and safe week. It's really perfect weather now getting into October, getting into the fall, and we'll start seeing the pumpkins and all of those other things. Watch out for the big spiders out there. Okay, stay happy and I'll see you next week.